You're looking at Unrendered on IKTV. I'm Tony Redisford, and I'm chatting with Joseph Reds Pereira. He's the author of this book, Living My Dreams. Reds, we talk about all these obstacles that you overcame, one of not having a formal education as such, the other one about your stammering. But you were afflicted with a stroke um, some years ago. And it was a fairly serious stroke as, uh, as well. Take me through that um, when, you know, the thing came on and how you managed to come back to being Red Square in, in, in almost your full way. It was New Year's Day, 1996. I was in Sydney, Australia, covering the West Indies tour. Um, it was only as night, and mm -hmm. um, I decided that the people I was staying with, I wouldn't go out. I would spend a quiet night because tomorrow morning would be a long day. Yes. Um, I had dinner, watched television. There was something on the whole history of Australia, how it was formed. No nausea, mm -hmm. no headache, nothing but just looking forward to West Indies at Sydney. Big crowd, can, yeah. we, can we win? Went to bed. And woke up at half past five, and my left side was out of sync. Mm -hmm. Well, I got up, struggled up, and um, it went away, and I came back to normal. Mm -hmm. And Carol, a Trinidad girl who was married to a friend of mine, an Australian cricket lover, he's a lawyer, she said, let's go to a doctor. Well, let's New Year's Day, all, all the Catholic doctors are probably just coming <laughs> home from all year's night. Right. I walked down, I got dressed, everything is fine. I, I felt we're a high boy, I, I might be able to get myself out of this trouble, you know. Uh, all the feelings came back, all the... And whilst we are at the Jewish doctor, and he's just taking notes uh, of the background, uh, the whole pa paralysis came back. Relapse. Mm -hmm. Well, the next step, was to take me to hospital. But I didn't have blue cross, white cross, red cross, mm. no kind of cross. The only thing that helped me to get into that hospital, Tony, because I certainly didn't have the money for the cost of what was about to happen, was the fact that I had my Australian Broadcasting Corporation ID mm -hmm. with me. And the girl said, Carol said, um, he's here broadcasting cricket for the Austrian Broadcasting Service. And that made the difference. And that made the difference, you know. I mean, the, 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 medical, the medical team around me, you know, I mean, there were so many things stuck on to me. Mm -hmm. I think they were checking to see what's the damage. Yes. You know, was my heart damaged? Was there any brain damage, yes, you know? Yes. And um, by 7 o'clock, I could not lift my hand to look at the watch. You know, I was just losing. Yeah. I was losing. So it was your left side. Left was, side, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, I was taken to a ho the hospital bed, and there was I, far away from the West Indies. And they said, what is happening? Well, I mean, i trying to come to, come to terms with what has happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, my whole life has changed. Yes. You know, my whole life has changed. You know, I, I didn't see myself. What I wanted then was to simply be able to come back, to come back to the West Indies. Yes. I would have settled for that. Yes. But then I start hoping for more as medical um, help improve me. Right, right. And people were marvelous. You know, there's um, <clears throat> someone who's my neighbor, right? in St. Lucia, Leslie Clark. The second day, I saw a very tall Australian man coming in with a bunch of flowers. And I said, no, he's coming to the wrong bed. Nobody mm. knows me. Mm. He said, are you Joseph Pereira? I said, yes. He said, your neighbor, in St. Leslie Lucia. Clark, yes. sent us. Yes. Well, in, if you ever have a stroke, you cry a lot. Right. I broke down in tears. Yes, yes. Joseph Madeira from the Guardian in Trinidad Sent by, I don't know what kind of pack, quick pack, express. Whatever, but it got there. 
a huge bunch of Guardian's newspaper yes. with a T-shirt marked Guardian, but it's gotten a little small for you now. <laughs> can't wear it. You know, people were really. Mar I had a cousin. Mm. A cousin in Melbourne drove 13 hours to come and see me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he, the late Hugh Croskill called me on the phone. I struggled. They put me in a wheelchair. I went in the phone. He said, um, "Can you do it?" I said, like, "I mm. have to try." Yes, yes. He interviewed me, and you can tell from the interview that yeah. I was in trouble. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, Pat Rousseau, former West Indies board Cricket, president, yeah, right. called and said, "Hi, you know, we hear of you." He calls me back in 24 hours. He said, "Need a bank account." Cut a long story short. Yeah, you send the money. He sent fifteen thousand U.S. dollars from the private sector in Jamaica, right, to look after my initial, my initial expenses. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people were really marvelous. But I think you get a stroke, you have to have a strong mind. You have to fight back. You can't say, "Oh, why me?" You know. So tell me how you came over, got over this paralysis, because you know some people remain paralyzed. Yeah. Uh, you know, partially paralyzed. Well, um, there was the gym mm. in the hospital, and I had to go and work. I had to work hard. This this hand was frozen. Mm -hmm. This was in a strap. Yes. And I used to look at this hand and hope one day life will come back. And one day, Tony, the therapist was coming, and I looked at this hand. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And I got the little finger to move. just to move. And all of a sudden, I realized, hold on. She came, and mm. she thought that, that that was a marvelous sign. Mm. By the end of the week, the hand was opening, mm -hmm. but it was still very, very painful. The shoulder was frozen. Mm -hmm. So I had to do exercises. They used to put me up on a board to do tic-tac-toe to move things do pain yeah. and move it, you know, and there were exercises. On the weekend when the gym would close, I would beg for the key and I would go in to the, me alone, right, and go on the walking machine, go on the, on the they, they had a, like two bars and you can walk back and forward, you know, and mm. I would do my step ups and step down, stretches along the wall where you, I'm trying to climb the wall. Great pain. Well, I, I, I fought back. But when I got back, I was still in a wheelchair. Yes, fair enough. Yeah. But, I mean, you know. But I, I was on my way. I couldn't swim. Yes. My brother sent me a jacket. This is after coming up in that river, the Pomeroon. Yeah. Mastering yeah, I couldn't the swim. tides. And I had no swim. power left. Yes. I, I floated in the sea outside of St. Lucia and slowly but surely started to use my hands. Yeah. building back power in here and you know, things like that. I couldn't drive. I lost confidence. Angles. I had to take my time. I used to get a lift. Oh, another thing, Tony. They said, when you get back, try and start working as soon after possible. Mm -hmm. See the doctor. Let him. But I got them to send a whole dossier to Dr. Luisi. So he knew exactly what um, was the treatment. Mm -hmm. And I was in warfare. Warfarin is not an easy thing because you never know. Your blood levels go up and down. Right. I eventually was weaned on to aspirins, which is great. And they said, go back to work. Get into a, a situation where you are starting to make decisions. Well, from the hospital bed, I had arranged with a friend of mine to come and take dictations for letters because the, the, the OECS program was virtually 90% done when I left to go to Australia. Yes. I had to follow up, right? And, you know, I, I, I was tired. I used to get very tired. And he will come and take the decisions. He created a letterhead, and he will be faxing people. Luckily, I, I had all my information. He will be faxing Dr. Lewis or fa fa faxing um, Mrs. Jessamine. Mm -hmm. I will ask her to get on to so-and-so for me. And I managed to keep the momentum going. I was able to go back to the sports desk and simply, but by one o'clock, I was shattered. Yeah, you're tired. Tired. 
I mean, a lot, a lot of it, what you speak about, right, is contained within the, the pages of your, your Living My Dreams. Yeah. And, you know, overcoming these challenges, overcoming these obstacles has really been a hallmark of your, your life. And yet you have been able, well, I should say, no surprise, that you've been able to remain a very positive individual. Let's take a snapshot of where you are now, today. What are you doing as your occupation now? How do you keep yourself going? I know you do a bit of cricket commentary here and there. Yes, I still do um, some commentary. Mm. I'm very happy to be in St. Vincent. St. Vincent will all be special to me. After I got back and got stronger, New Zealand were touring. Mm -hmm. And the management of Richardson Vincent then called me and said they would like to put me on the panel. I wasn't sure if I could, could do it. I wasn't sure if I could do it good enough. Yes, yes. But it was a great offer. It was therapy. And I came... The Balcom family were extremely helpful. A couple of doctors came around, checked my blood pressure, yes, yes. you know, made sure I was okay. And I remember, um, you know, working with Mike Finley, and then eventually I came on, and it was Ambrose bowling to, to Crow. And uh, it was a, a great feeling to be able to come back and actually broadcast the game. Yes, yeah. yes I, I, I can imagine. Now, you were involved in something that I was involved with, um, you know, the, the thing called Sport for Life, which was educating underprivileged children yeah. through sport. Would you like to see more of that sort of stuff um, going on in the Caribbean? Are you going to get involved in more of that sort of stuff? Well, I think th that program has a benefit uh, where you, you look at the people who need the holistic development, you know, IT, healthy lifestyles, yes. um, the math, and English. math and English, cricket. Yes. But of late, I've been, I've been trying to develop an idea in St. Lucia where you have a lot of unemployed people, whether we like it or not, they yes. are there. Yeah, they're there. You have facilities built by governments, built by taxpayers. Yes who lie idle from 6 in the morning stadia, stadia until tend to, Stadia training. all over the world yeah. tend to be that But these way, are actually. netball courts and yes. basketball courts, yes, yes, right, yes. and playing fields. So if you can combine that and maybe have a program three times a week where you and I, as unemployed people, after we scratch a cup of tea and a piece of bread, mm. could go to X and run a basketball scrubby for an hour, yeah. get a T-shirt, get your name recorded, a database is created, and maybe get some private sector group to donate, donate lunch. Yes. And that happens twice a week, three times a week. You just might save that person from going down the wrong road, yes. from getting involved in drugs. Yes. That is a little project I'm working on now. I work for VOB, Voice of Barbados. I work for Wave FM in, in St. Lucia. Lucia. I do a little bit of work for Sandals in their sports programs because they, they have an academy. So you kept busy. I, I, I keep myself busy. Um, I'm on the computer every morning at about 5, 5.30. You know, and I, I, I take an interest. I'm involved in boxing in, in St. Lucia. And um, I've stepped down as president, but I'm still a member of the committee. And boxing has saved lives in St. Lucia. There are a number of people who would not have been on this earth if they were not involved in, a boxing, in boxing, and you also have to get them into employment. So it, it needs to be a, a bit of a program. Yes. And what I'm talking about, using the facilities that are unused, can happen anywhere in the Caribbean. Because an unemployed guy sits on the block. If he knows he can go and get a sweat, he can go and play some football, he can go. Yes. And you can then put create a database where you can put him into maybe turning a welder or car, turning a carpenter. Is he interested in farming? Is he interested in further education? The, the, I'm trying to develop that concept to see if, if you know, the authorities might like to run. Well, Rez, I wish you luck with that. Sadly, we're at the end of this program, and um, I'm going to have you back at some stage when you're in St. Vincent. I know you're always here because we haven't spoken about West Indies cricket and the state of West Indies cricket, and that's that's... That's a program by itself. Well, that's, that's three days. Yeah. <laughs> that's three days. So, so, thank you for coming. And um, I hear you are following the, 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 what is it, the 
the tournament that's going on. The regional tournament. The regional tournament, tournament yeah, yeah, yeah. around. So yes. I hope you have fun doing that. Uh, I will, it was great to be back in St. Vincent. I want to thank uh, Marty Bullock, and I want to thank uh, the Bank of St. Vincent because they made it possible for me to come here. And Rage of St. Vincent, Gunny Hines and the boys for having me. Very good. good Thanks great. for coming. This has been another edition of Unrendered. My guest was Joseph Reds Pereira. He's the author of the book, Living My Dreams. Jomo Thomas is up next with Plain Talk. Thank you.